What actually is radioactivity? Many of us have heard this word before, but what does it actually mean? The word is made up of two Latin words, namely radius, which means ray, and activus, which means activity. So it's radiation activity. Thus, radioactivity is the characteristic behavior of unstable cores of atoms spontaneously decaying into different nuclei and emitting radiation in the process. There are different types of atoms with unstable cores, and these are collectively referred to as radionuclides. This gentleman here is Antoine-Henri Becquerel, and he was the first to observe this phenomenon in 1896. Two years later, it was Marie and Pierre Curie who first used the word radioactivity for this radiation that is caused by the decay of nuclei. But why do these nuclei decay at all? The cores of atoms consist of protons, these are positively charged particles, and neutrons, which are neutral particles. With stable nuclei, there is a certain stable proportion of protons and neutrons. But if there are too many or too few neutrons compared with the number of protons, this equilibrium in the core of the atom gets out of balance, and the core becomes unstable and decays. By the way, there are more than 3,000 different radionuclides known to this day. These can be described by different properties or be divided into different groups of types. One example of this is their classification by the kind of radiation they emit upon decay. In this case, one speaks for example of alpha, beta, and gamma emitters. But there is also another property that can be used for dividing up radionuclides, and that is their so-called half-life. This is the period of time after which statistically, half of the nuclei of a certain initial amount has decayed. The experts distinguish between short-lived and long-lived radionuclides. Finally, the radionuclides can also be grouped according to their origin. You can have artificial radionuclides that arise during certain technical processes. Among these are, for example, cesium-137, which is formed upon nuclear fission in nuclear power plants, or technetium-99M, which is generated for medical applications by radiation. In contrast, natural radionuclides occur in the environment without any human intervention. Part of the natural radionuclides are generated all the time by cosmic radiation impinging on the upper strata of the Earth's atmosphere. An example of this is carbon-14, which is used for determining the age of fossils. The other natural radionuclides are already formed when the universe came into being. Hence, they were already around when our planet Earth originated. Here on Earth, there will be no new nucleides of this type. In space, however, new ones will continue to emerge, through supernovas, for example. The fact that these radionuclides can still be found on Earth today is due to their extreme longevity. Among them is also uranium-235, which is used as fuel in nuclear power plants, and potassium-40, which can be found inside the human body. If you want to know more about the classification of radionuclides, why not watch our videos on the topics of the different kinds of radiation and on half-life?